three. Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Catherine Biroy, CEO and founder, best-selling author and your personal growth and business coach. I have one mission, to help you do what you love and make your business flourish. And I'm bringing in experts from different fields to help you reach your goal. I am so excited and grateful to be here today with one of my dearest friends, Sue De Caro. Sue is a PCI certified parent coach, educator, writer, and motivational speaker who is focused on consistent living and conscious living and parenting. As a coach, Sue supports parents and families worldwide in navigating through life's daily challenges. Her passion is to help people deeply connect to themselves, to their children, and of course, the world around them, creating a brighter future. Sue serves as a guest parent specialist coach on Mind Valley University training. She had writings featured in various online publications and magazines, has been an invited guest on radio shows and podcasts, and has also appeared on the Dr. Nandi show. She has presented at events featuring Dr. Shefali, Neil Donald Walsh, Marian Williamson, Anita Morgiani, and John Sullivan. Welcome, Sue. How are you today? Thank you so much. I'm fabulous. Thank you so much for having me here today with you. It's my pleasure. Uh, so we will dive in right away, shall we? Okay. Absolutely. So tell us Sue, a little bit more about how you decided to become a parent coach. What, what actually motivates you? Well, that's a great question. I, I think the first thing that motivates me or did motivate me to get into this field was really my own struggles as a parent. Parenting is one of the hardest jobs out there. And I know firsthand, I have two now grown children, but I experienced a lot of struggles raising. And I was raising myself as I was raising them and learning and growing. And so through my own evolution, I decided to go back to school and become a certified parent coach and coach to help parents and individuals consciously live and consciously raise children today. Again, as I said, I think this is one of the hardest jobs out there, and we need to bring compassion and kindness to ourselves as we also bring it to our children and families. Wonderful. I've been watching your videos, I've been listening to your podcasts and everything for a while, and I can say, guys, you definitely should search for Sue online and get all that wisdom that she has to share with you because she is truly brilliant. And then I could say that as being a parent. Too. Thank so, you. so, you know, I am a busy mom and uh, I have a lot of things to do and I really want to connect deeply with my son. So how you can uh, actually do that as a busy mom when you are so overwhelmed and in this so, you know, uh, um, busy world, actually, what we can do and how we can leverage our connection with our children if we are so uh, on all over the places? I think that that is one of the most important questions. And I get asked this question a lot because we are very busy. Some call it overscheduled. Sometimes our children are overscheduled. And I think it's really something to focus on, not the amount of time that you spend with your child, because then guilt sets in. I don't have that much time and I'm working all the time, but really the quality of time. So the time that you have with your children and families you want to look at how you can create the connections within that the time frame and what that looks like. The first key is presence. Be present. So if you're coming into the household from work and your kids are home, that first 15 minutes of reentry with our children and families is key. So whether you're reentering into their world or they're reentering into your world from a sporting event or something, you're coming together for the first time in your day. Make that a time of connection. So what that means is put the mail down, put your phone down, and sit with your children or stand with your children, whatever suits you, to really connect with them, to talk with them, to listen wholeheartedly to them. This is how connections are built, when we're actually paying attention to one another and listening and connecting without distractions and interference. And I think a couple other key points is connect in their world. Many times we expect our children to join us where we are. You know, I need to go make my bed or I need to go, you know, clean up the dishes. And children don't want to be part, part of cleaning up the dishes, of course. <laughs> that doesn't sound like fun. So connect in their world when you can, whenever you can. If you need to make dinner and you're kind of pressed for time, 
create a dance party in the kitchen so that your child is part of what you're doing, but you've made it fun or ask them what would be a fun way to make dinner together where we can really, you know, groove and turn on loud music and have a, have a party. So these are the kinds of things we have to be extremely creative to bring those connections about the busier we are, but be present for every single connection with your child. Be present. This is so wise and brilliant. I actually read one of the things you wrote when you said that children perceive time as love. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you Absolutely. give them time, if, if you are present, they will, they will read that as love. And Absolutely. I am really trying to do that as much as I can. And um, I mean, my son is just two and a half, three years old, and he is now like everywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> I am always trying to, to fit in somehow. And, you know, he is uh, uh, dropping everything, spilling everything, but we make dinner together. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'd love to be a fly on the wall to watch that. I'm sure it's tons of fun. <laughs> like incredible. <laughs> you, we just have to go with the flow as parents. We have to go with the flow and let our children lead because mm -hmm. they need some control over their lives. If we're constantly controlling the play mm -hmm. and where we want to play with them, they have so little control in their life and then we've taken that away. So let's just follow our children around or our grandchildren in my case and, and play in their world when we can. Wonderful. Um, and so how we can understand our children better, especially if they can express themselves and actually we don't understand what are their real needs. How would you suggest us to what to do? I, I think that's a really important topic. Um, one of the things is watch for clues with your children. So even, even an infant gives mm -hmm. clues. Obviously, they can't talk. But, you know, when babies are born, they start to have patterns when they cry, when they want to be changed. They have a certain cry. When they're hungry, they have a certain cry. And just having watched my grandson, who is about uh, 12 and a half weeks old, overnight, I, I learned, relearned that that is definitely present. They cry to give you the clues and cues of when they're hungry and frustrated, et cetera, et cetera. And I think it's really about tuning in from from birth on, tuning into your child, tuning into the cues. And so when they're two or two and a half and they're not really speaking a whole lot or can't explain their emotions, you're tuned in to the look of frustration, right? Because mm -hmm. their children do get frustrated mm -hmm. or the look of sadness. And you can help them to understand what that emotion is or what the frustration looks like or what they might be frustrated about by bringing words to life, bringing language to life for them. Mm -hmm. This is how we teach emotional intelligence, is helping our children to understand what the word is that describes what we are, you know, tuning into in terms of their feelings. We can't always know 100%, but as a parent, you, you certainly know your child better than anybody else. And so really trying to be aware of what might be going on can help them and help you too. Wonderful. I'm, I'm definitely on, on, on the board with that. Uh, I mean, you know, he's three years old and sometimes he knows what he wants and what he wants to say. Sometimes he just cry and then you have to, then you have to discover what's up and what you have to do. Uh, right. but, but giving ourselves to our children is like the greatest and the hardest job we can ever do, but uh, we can never do, but I just don't see that as a job, but uh, you know, we struggled a lot, my husband and I, to have a baby for six years. We had in vitro procedures and nothing was successful, you know, and then it just happened. And we are now give, giving our best to, to live in this, you know, crazy world and to give him the best and to raise him as a good human being. Actually, it's what, what is our goal and what we are trying to do. Beautiful. And that is a beautiful goal, Catherine. Absolutely beautiful. And thank you for helping people all, all over the world to do the same. It's my honor and pleasure. Now I have a, a, a special part of the interview and it's, going, it's called uh, uh, Expert Fun. And it, actually it's going to show up your expertise on a very high level. I'm going to ask you uh, quick questions 
and uh, you will answer me in just, uh, just a sentence or just in 10 seconds. And you will hear the bell ring when, when the time comes up. So uh, we will make it a little bit funnier for our audience. And uh, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so first one. What's your advice about self-care? Make self-care a priority. It should be at the top of your list. It's one of the most important things you can do for yourself to fill your own tank first before you take care of anyone else. Wonderful. <laughs> should parents tap into their intuition and why? Intuition is your inner wisdom. It's your inner knowing. And that's one of the things that I help parents to tap into. So absolutely listen to what's coming through you from the inside out, not the outside in. Wow, from the inside out, not the outside in. A, I'm going to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> a new quote. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell us a few ways of empowering our children. Our children need to be empowered. Uh, one of the ways would be to really give them an opportunity to solve some of their problems by asking questions from a place of curiosity. So instead of giving information, ask questions that help our child to tap into their intuition, inner wisdom, and knowledge to come up with a solution themselves. Step back and allow for space for children to, to serve themselves. We don't have to fix it, solve it, or put a bandage on it. We have to give our children the opportunity to do that themselves. Wonderful. Should we set boundaries to our children? Boundaries are really important in life. And yes, I absolutely think we need boundaries, but they should be clear val values that we hold, not the outside world telling us what the boundaries should be, but the values internally that we feel strongly about, creating boundaries from those places and those, that perspective. Wonderful. And what's your favorite book? Today, Indistractable by Nir Eyal. Awesome. This is, guys, why Sue is an expert and why she can help you and why you should hire her. And from my experience, it is complete pleasure to work with her because she is one incredible soul and she's just like, you know, like my angel. Oh, thank you. So what we can expect from your magic until the end of the year? Well, more magic, I hope, than I have brought already. I will continue to offer all sorts of things and all sorts of platforms. Um, I have a, uh, a course that I'll be launching soon, so I'm really excited about that. I can't share too many details yet because it's, it's uh, not ready, but it will be soon. Mm -hmm. So I hope to empower many, many people all over the world in the work that they're doing and the jobs they're doing as parents and individuals living a conscious life. Wonderful. And you have a free gift for our audience, right? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. So to go along with our conversation about connection, my free gift is about connection. It's about 10 ways that you can connect with your child or children. And I think sometimes we get stale and trying to think of new ways. So this hopefully will spark some new ideas that you can take to your home and put into place to connect more deeply with your children. So if you go to my website, www.decaroparentcoaching.com, you'll be able to download your free gift, 10 Ways to Connect with Your Child. Wonderful. And I will leave the link in the comments below so awesome. they, can, they can reach it out. Where else people can find you? Can they find you on social networks, DM you, email you, or how they can find you? So you can find me all over. I'm on Facebook, Sue DeCaro official is my public page. You can find me on Instagram, Sue DeCaro. You can find me on Twitter and LinkedIn, Sue DeCaro. And you can also join me on suedecaro.com, which is my second website with more information about the work that I do worldwide. And you can certainly email me at sue at decaroparentcoaching.com. That's how you do business. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here for you and I'm here to serve. Nothing gives me greater pleasure than to serve people all over the world to help them to connect deeply with themselves and to the families and children in their presence. And we definitely all need that, especially if we are working so hard, if we don't have time and we need to know what is the best way to do and to build up our families and to give our children the best. Thank you so much for being my guest. It was my pleasure, sir. It was an honor. Thanks for having me, Catherine. Bye. Bye.